Hey guys, welcome to Dylan's Little Hobbies. And today we are talking about Dragon Ball Super episode 94 and 95. Because, well, I sort of missed 94 and I had to play recap. But uh, now I have so I can review both episodes. And let me tell you, both of these episodes are all about Frieza. But before I do, I want to tell you guys, I am actually looking forward to getting on GodTube. All I have to do is set it up with beers. Okay, I'm totally kidding about that, but I swear, I can't believe they called it GodTube. I think that is hilarious. You know what I should do? I should probably make a YouTube account or a separate YouTube account for my own and call it GodTube just for the fun of it and see what people actually think. Because I think GodTube is really, really funny. Let me know in the comments below what you, what you thought about the name GodTube. I, I think that's hilarious. But now to move on to the episode. Episode 94, take Goku sitting down having a meal after he got uh, done talking to Frieza. And the guys are like, okay, what did you, you, you tell Frieza to get him to join the team? Because he must have told him something. He told everybody else something. He might have let it slip that he would let Frieza be revived if they win the tournament. Ooh, Goku, not a good idea. And everybody thinks it's a bad idea, which of course it is, but Whis has a good point. Frieza is not the worst thing on the table right now, so you might as well, uh, well just let it go. And then, we get one of the what I think is probably going to go down in history as, at least for me, one of my five funniest moments in Dragon Ball Super. So this is what happens. So, so, no one told the kids, specifically Gohan and Goten, about the Tournament of Power because if they do, they will want to join. And the problem with that is it's the entire universe on their shoulders. It's a really good idea not to put their entire universe on little kids' shoulders, even though these little kids are probably ten times stronger than half of the team on there. It's still not a good idea to put them on there. And I do like the fact that they aren't. Even though I wish we did have more Gohan and Trunks, I do think it's a really good idea that they are not in the turn. So we get this really hilarious scene. Trunks goes up to the board where they were planning their attack from the tournament and sees the pictures of Frieza. And he asks, what's this about? Boma, thinking on her feet, says, Oh, this is because of your sister's party. And Trunks looks at the picture, looks back, and goes, That's Frieza. Why are you inviting him? I thought he was a really, really bad guy. My favorite scene of the entire, both episodes, my favorite scene, would have to be Vegeta going to his son and saying, Oh no, son, he turned over a new leaf. He's a really, really good guy now. And then there's this, like, vision of his psyche going, Oh my god, I have to re really offend Frieza to my own son? Oh, oh my god, it was hilarious. Priceless. I loved it. So Goten changes the subject and Ghost tells Trunks about Seventeen Wine to come to the party. But he can't because he has an island of monsters that he's got to babysit. And he can't leave him alone, even for a second. So he needs Goten and Trunks to babysit for him. Goten and Trunks are, of course, going to say yes. And Trunks goes to call Goten about it immediately. Now, Goku can't exactly babysit the kids and fly them to 17th Island because he needs to go pick up Frieza. So he asked Krillin to do it. And Krillin isn't absolutely sure. You see, as much as he loves his wife, 18, he doesn't have much of a relationship with 17, which actually I thought wasn't the case because considering the other episode when 17 was talking to Goku about his brother, which is Krillin, 
I thought they had a really good relationship, but I, but I guess Thanksgiving isn't all hugs and kisses. I think it's pretty much nervousness at the table. As we see in the very next scene, he meets Seventeen, and Krillin is just trying to talk up a conversation with the guy, and being absolutely nervous, knowing that these two androids could kill him instantly, and I just love the dynamic between the two, the nervous family mean. It's really, it's really, really cute. And kind of reminiscent of the old Dragon Ball uh, all series, uh, Dragon Ball all, uh, Dragon Ball Z series. And I'll tell you why. Because between 17 and 18, the dynamic between them was pretty much as it is now. By the way, I love the joke about Marin and Marin, Krillin's ex-girlfriend and Krillin's daughter. I don't know if they threw that in for an absolute joke or something, but I thought it was really brilliant. Okay, right after that, we cut them to flying to Bulma's house, and when they get there, Seventeen sees Piccolo again. And oh my god, when he... And oh my god, what I thought was going to happen was a total awesome battle was going to start again. Because if you remember in the old Dragon Ball Z, so... Because if you remember in the old Dragon Ball Z, they actually had a really awesome fight. And even though I know Seventeen would definitely win, I would love to see an actual one-on-one -on -one between Seventeen and Piccolo again. Because Piccolo is a lot stronger too. But no, we don't get that. Instead, we get them sizing up to each other and then saying, Welcome to the team. Fantastic. Okay, and now let's go ahead and talk about the big finale of the show. Frieza has returned. And the first thing Frieza does is punches Goku in the stomach. Goku, knowing how Frieza is, punches him right back. And then they get the news that somebody is out there waiting for him. Frieza and Goku goes outside to see what's going on. And there's a bunch of these guys from obviously another universe. Of course, Goku asks them three times where they come from and who are they. And the dog's like, nope, can't tell you. Nope, can't tell you. Nope, uh, can't tell you. And then Frieza shots him in the arm. And goes golden Frieza. Now, the scene where Frieza goes golden, absolutely beautiful animation. I, I wish this is what they did in the other episodes. It's almost at like movie level. It was just amazing and beautiful animation. Fantastic! And then, of course, that's the end of that episode, and let's talk about episode 95. So, this is. Really, really easy to talk about. Frieza kills everybody. Well, just about everybody. You see, those guys are from another universe. They're from universe... What is it? Universe 9? Universe 10? I can't remember what universe it is exactly. But it, it comes from that Seedra. And that Seedra guy actually gave them a little bit of destructive energy. So after Frieza has his fun destroying everybody, Free uh, the guy goes uh, up to Frieza and throws that energy that he got from Cedra. Now this actually got me really good when Frieza, Frieza actually does get hit hit by one. That there's three of them. One goes over his neck. Then Frieza blasts one out of his hand. But those uh, first two were fake. And then he zooms, uh, uh, zooms up with one, and it hits Frieza. And I thought that it actually was going to destroy Frieza. I thought Frieza was long dead. I thought we were going to get Boo back. And I thought that it was all a joke, and it was actually good while it lasted. That isn't what happened. Frieza was absolutely faking, and he was actually able to control that energy push it down, he was actually able to condense and push it down back into a small form. Then Goku goes up to him and goes, wow, what is that? It must be destructive energy. 
What happens after that? He hits Goku with it. <laughs> now th this is fantastic. And then he moves on, kills everybody. He steals a con link to Universe 9, I believe it was, and tries to make a deal with them, but then Beerus shows up and he really can't make a, make a deal with them and he crushes it. Okay, real quick, I really want to talk about uh, out the fact that Goku couldn't push down that, that power like Frieza did, and I think there is a good reason why. Frieza was in his final form when he did. Goku probably could have done it easily if he was in Super Saiyan Blue before he got hit with it. But, of course, uh, Beerus shows up, Beerus blows it away, and Beerus is suspicious of Frieza, which he should be. And he's about to, I, I believe he was about to Hakai Frieza, but then Goku stops him and tells him, you know what, I got a better idea. He wants to fight Frieza for one minute. He goes Super Saiyan Blue. Frieza is, of course, a Golden Frieza. They do one super punch and knock each other out. Now, a lot of people think that Frieza is now stronger than Goku. I still don't think that's the case. I still think Goku has a lot more power in him than he thinks. In fact, I believe we have a new form of Goku coming up that might really, really put Frieza back in the spot where he belongs. By the way, if you guys are wondering how Frieza was able to control his new form, because he used to not be able to, this is Frieza's full strength. I believe that he was in fact this strong in the movie as well. It's just that he wasn't able to control it, and that's why he seems so much stronger now, because he's not really so much stronger, he has more control of it, which is very, very important. And how did he gain that control? Oh, by focusing on killing Goku for as long as he's been in hell. Well, that's about it for Dragon Ball Super Episode 94 and 95. If you have not seen these episodes, what are you waiting for? You guys definitely have to go play some catch-up. These two episodes are really, really awesome. But that's about it from me. Thank you guys for watching, and I'm out. Bye!